welcome to the Functional Medicine Radio Show with your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, known internationally as the Functional Medicine Doc. Dr. Carrie is committed to helping patients find the root cause of their health problems and fixing the cause with natural treatments so they can feel normal again. Dr. Carey is the founder of Functional Medicine Ontario and is the author of the hit book, Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again. Please welcome your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Functional Medicine Radio Show, the only Internet radio show dedicated to giving you real solutions to improve your health. Not only are they real solutions, but they're natural solutions as well. Because as you know, the one and only true wealth you have is your health. I'm your host, Dr. Kiri Drizga, the Functional Medicine Doc, and I'm committed to helping you find the root cause of your health problem, fix the cause with natural treatments so you can feel normal again and live your life to the fullest. Just a quick bit of housekeeping before I introduce today's special guest. I'm happy to announce that I'm now working on my next book. The title is Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again for Men. I've discovered 14 root causes of fatigue. I like to call them the fatigue factors. And in this book, I'll explain eight of the 14 and how they specifically relate to guys. And of course, I'll include my own personal fatigue story along with four or five other stories from real fatigue cases from my private practice. This book should be ready later this year, so keep an eye out for it. That's it for our housekeeping, so let's get started. I'm very excited about this week's show because my special guest is Michael Mutzel. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Mike is working on his master's in clinical nutrition, and he lectures on the power of nutrition and functional medicine. His book is The Belly Fat Effect, The Real Secret About How Your Diet, Intestinal Health, and Gut Bacteria Help You Burn Fat. Mike lives in Kirkland, Washington with his wife, Deanna, who is a chiropractor and has a daughter and two dogs. Mike, thank you so much for being my special guest today on this episode of the Functional Medicine Radio Show. My pleasure, Dr. Carey. Thanks so much for having me. Well, we have a lot in common. I am also married to a chiropractor. I also have two dogs. <laughs> right on. And, you know and, what? I, and I love functional medicine. Absolutely. And we actually do have a lot in common, more than you know. And so my wife's actually from Ontario as well. So I you may not know that. So, um, oh, Really? I what part you, of Ontario is she from? She's from Elora, which is, I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's just a little no. bit north. <laughs> Yeah, it's a small little town north of um, Mississauga is the closest big city I would remember. It's about 90 minutes north oh, of that. Oh, okay, so. okay. Yeah, I'm I'm actually born and raised in Chicago, and I'm transplanted to Canada. There you go. <laughs> and awesome. so, so your wife transplanted to the U.S. Right, right. Yeah, she went the other way. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, so let's talk about your book today, because one of the things you say in your book is you say... You promise to change the way we look at metabolism, and that's a pretty bold statement. Yeah, it's you know it's funny. For a long time, we've had this kind of one-dimensional viewpoint of our metabolism. We think that you know certain foods you know affect, for example, blood sugar regulation. Mm-hmm. You know, we often mm-hmm. hear nutrition about low glycemic index and low fat, high fat foods, and we we kind of have viewed nutrition in a vacuum and uh, discussed it without looking at the this forgotten organ called our gut bacteria. And at the time that I wrote the book back in 2012, you know, the gut bacteria was not a kitchen table topic like it is now. You know, I mean, everyone now knows that gut bacteria control our mood, control our emotions, control immunity, control metabolic health. And and that's, you know, why, you know, kind of the impetus for writing the book. And, And when I started writing it, you know, actually back in 2010, you know. Um, but anyway, so, so the, the whole concept of the book and the whole paradigm that I'm trying to, to uh, instill in people's brains is that when you eat your food or, you know, any negative emotion that you think, uh, exercise patterns, habits, uh, stressors, and so forth, the, all those factors affect this this microbiome, this 100 trillion single-celled collection of microorganisms that has 6,300 and some odd different functions, you know, more metabolic functions than our liver, which is one of the most metabolically active organs in our body. So it's very active. And so the point here is that we need to eat a lot of color, a lot of phytonutrients. We need to really focus on digestive health, which we can talk about the importance of that. Uh, and chewing food mindfully, which is a, a huge step there. But really, the 
the color, the phytonutrients, and then and then look at you know macronutrients a, a little bit uh, later. But I, I like to you know really focus on on encouraging people to eat a lot of berries, a lot of herbs, spices, curcumin, turmeric, rosemary, garlic, ginger, things like that that can really enhance the diversity of your, your gut microbiome, so that they'll make your other lifestyle habits that you change to you know achieve optimal health, uh, you know more stable and solidified. There's so much that you talk about in your book, and I know we will not have time to cover it all today. I might already have you back for a second episode here, but can you talk a little bit about what is sick fat? Yeah, great, great question. Well, you know, it's funny. When you look at fat under a microscope, and we're talking about adipose tissue or body fat, um, there's some things that that kind of shift over time as people put on more and more weight, and this is you know, uh, noticeable actually starting in children. And it's that's what was really profound. You know, you start to see these pathological shifts in adipose tissue uh, as early as children of eight years old. And these pathological shifts, uh, you know, I believe, and research shows this, um, one of the factors that make weight loss when people um, you know, get really overweight or obese and they're trying to lose weight. I, I think these shifts, the research shows this, um, makes that harder and more difficult. And so what we see is so fat tissue kind of has this propensity uh, when it gets inflamed and sick, like what we're talking about here in the context of overweight and obesity, is there's a lot of immune cells that infiltrate in and around fat tissue. And these immune cells thrive on sugar um, they, they start releasing a lot of pro-inflammatory cytokines, and as I'm sure your listeners know, uh, the root of pretty much every disease that you can think of is infl- inflammation, inflammatory-based. And so, you know, we, we get this whole body, low-grade inflammation, and that really kind of skews our metabolism out of a fat-burning mode into more of a sugar-burning mode. And, of course, cancer cells love sugar, um, you know, inflammatory cells love sugar, and this is, you know, part of the problem, and we see this high co-occurrence of obesity and overweight with cancer. And that's because this, at the cellular level, there's this, you know, kind of metabolic shift going on. So, you know, it's important to, uh, to kind of reverse this. So, so if you're, you know, in the category of a little bit too much body fat, now not all body fat is bad. We're really talking mostly about belly fat around the, you know, the sides of the abdomen, the front of the abdomen, that deep, belly fat. And there's a reason why, you know, this adipose tissue may get more sick and more inflamed. And it's researchers have have shown that this close proximity to the gut is actually part of the reason. And so we get low grade gut permeability or IE leaky gut. We get uh, bacterial fragments coming through. They're activating the immune system that's creating this inflammation. And so um, we see this shift in the adipose tissue. So it's like, okay, now what do you do? What can you do about this? Well, um, an interesting thing is uh, that's not really discussed in the fitness community is this notion of like hypoxia or uh, reduced oxygen levels. And so what we see is when fat tissue becomes inflamed and becomes sick, it becomes really devoid of oxygen. And so uh, tissue biopsies of overweight versus lean individuals have have shown this. And um, when oxygen is deficient, you can't really start burning fat. You can't access that fat in the deep adipose tissue. So one thing that I recommend for for all people that are trying to lose weight is to um, focus on whole body movements. So movements like deadlifts, movements like squats, uh, even things like Tai Chi and yoga, more, you know, body weight resistant, you know, type whole body movements. And that will increase blood flow locally uh, in the abdomen and so forth. And that's really important to um, reverse this hypoxia and to reverse this inflammation. So um, and then doing core exercises pretty much every day, like making a morning routine of getting up and doing some, you know, some ab crunches, some planks, um, doing some you know, downward dog, things like that to really increase blood flow. Even massaging your abdomen, I think, is really uh, beneficial. Uh, research shows this helps to increase microcirculation, reverse hypoxia, and I think that's, you know, a huge step in the first direction um, outside of gut bacteria health and macronutrients and all that that we can talk about to help to reverse this sick fat. So a key component that you're saying is just getting more oxygen deep into the tissues. 
Yeah, and, and you know it gets a little bit nitty gritty into the science, but there's this this signaling molecule called hypoxia, inducible factor one alpha, and this is a huge part of of why people become inflamed and insulin resistant, and why fat tissue gets all dysfunctional, and and part, you know what triggers that is low levels of cellular oxygen. So we need to focus on increasing circulation, getting more blood, you know, to to that site, and it's. You know, if you think about, you know, standard American or a standard Canadian that's eating processed foods, doing a lot of sitting while driving, you know, the abdomen is not really moving. You know, that, that fat in there is just, you know, when you're sitting, you're not, you're not moving your abdomen if you're not exercising. So, you know, I think the deep belly breathing is really important, um, you know, and stretching and doing core exercises um, is, is huge to help to reverse this and increase blood flow and oxygen. So, Mike, is there any evidence about um, people that have anemia or iron deficiency that they're at more risk for a slower metabolism? Gosh, that's a really good question, and I haven't looked at that. um, You know, just thinking, you know, if you have anemia, you're going to have less oxygen being carried through your body. Mm -hmm. Great point. Yeah, I know. We should um, do a study on that. (laughs) <laughs> right. I'll go and PubMed and Dr. Carey and check that out. I'm, I'm sure there is a correlation. And we, you know, Tatis Grazian has talked about this for a, a very long time. You know, he's, you know, written extensively on Hashimoto's and thyroidism, mm-hmm. hypothyroidism. Yes. And, and one of his, you know, he introduces his lectures, and this was starting back in 2008, with you have to address, you know, the basics of oxygen uptake and, and um, you know, um, oxygen, you know, iron deficiency and so forth. So for our listeners out there, really the take-home message that Mike is giving us is the real importance of exercise and really moving your whole body, not just like focusing on your glutes or focusing on your biceps, but moving your whole body. Like you were saying, doing planks or doing, um, I was thinking like my my trainer has me crawling across the floor. I hate doing it, but man, it works the whole body. (laughs) Right. Uh, And so then Mike, how does leptin figure into all of this? Because we are hearing so much these days about leptin. Yeah, Dr. Gary, that's a great question. So leptin is really involved in this whole process. And it, it's this unique molecule. You know, when people think of leptin, they think of this, you know, kind of appetite, uh, you know, suppressing and, and kind of um, satiating hormone, uh, which it is, but it also has a huge role in the immune system. And that's why I think it's so fascinating. So Let's just do a quick overview. What is leptin? Well, it's a, what's known as a pleiotropic adipocytokine. And what that means is, you know, it's not only, you know, kind of this metabolic endocrine hormone, but it affects the immune system in a, in a huge way. So it's released from fat tissue. Um, its lowest levels are about midday. And so what that's, to, you know, instructing the body to do is to refuel and eat, uh, you know, a, the largest meal really during lunchtime. Uh, and then leptin in the normal state should slowly rise throughout the day. And it will be at its highest point right while we're sleeping. And the uh, the reason or the utility for that is to help us stay asleep, you know, so that we stay satiated. We're not trying to get up in the middle of our sleep cycle and refeed. Um, but the problem is, is when people gain more and more weight, the more fat cells they have, the more leptin they is released. And, uh, you know, basically the hypothalamus in the brain is saying, okay, we've had too much, you know, and imagine... Uh, if you ordered uh, pizza or flowers and 200 pizza men or 200 flowery, flower delivery people showed up at your door, you wouldn't even let one in. And that's kind of like the, the signal in hyperleptinemia and uh, what happens in overweight and obesity. So the message is not there. Now, that's problem number one. Problem number two is leptin is very pro-inflammatory. And uh, a lot of people don't recognize that aspect, and, and that's why I kind of you know, talk about it extensively in the book, because the more fat tissue you have, the more inflamed you're going to be. You know, we talked about hypoxia and oxygen deficiency and why movement for the core is so important. But reducing uh, belly fat is very important for reducing leptin, because, you know, leptin, what it does in the immune system is you have kind of policemen and you have bad guys, good guys and bad guys uh, in terms of our different types of immune cells. And one of the good guys that we all need and all want uh, are called the T regulatory cell. This uh-huh. is a very yeah, protective yeah, yeah. immune cell. Leptin suppresses the T reg cells. So then we see Hashimoto's, we see depression, we see yeah. cardiovascular disease and cancer. And so that's the link between you know, excess body fat and chronic 21st century diseases that 
we're seeing an uh, increased uh, number and in, in prevalence. So what can you really do about this? How can you restore your leptin levels? Well, you know, like we talked about, um, with the movement, very, very important, um, but also, um, you know, getting your sleep cycle in check. A lot of people, you know, go to bed at 10, a, 10 p.m. one day and then midnight the next day, then they're getting up at, you know, 5.30 for a meeting, then on the weekends they're sleeping in. So their biological rhythms are off. And it's very important that you're very consistent with your light exposure during the day. So light, getting out and walking, uh, you know, getting natural sunlight is huge for entraining your circadian rhythm and getting leptin back on track and avoiding artificial light at night is very key. And also meal timing. So ensuring that people are eating a small breakfast, you know, big if you can, uh, but making sure that lunch is the biggest meal of the day. And that's very important. We see so many people, you know, when I was doing a lot of weight loss coaching in a medical setting, you know, all the clients I've worked with would skip breakfast, have like a mm-hmm. Diet Coke and yeah, a muffin yeah, yeah. for lunch, and then this huge dinner. And they're wondering why they can't lose weight. And it's, you know, I mean, there's many other reasons in their lifestyle that I would think were contributing. But once we got their meal timing, uh, and getting them to eat breakfast and eat a nice big lunch, that had a huge shift in their energy, huge shift in their ability to work out after work, and a shift in their um, you know hormones related to fat loss. So as you were saying, leptin naturally is lowest around noon, and that's when we should be eating our biggest meal of the day. Right. And the more uh, belly fat we have, the more leptin... Uh, gets streamed throughout our system, creates inflammation, creates more belly fat, creates more leptin, creates more inflammation, creates more belly fat. It's a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great point. And not only that, but it's a vicious cycle in the entire endocrine system. Yeah, yeah. It screws up all the hormones, screws up your brain. (laughs) Right. Right. So it's everything. It's it's tough. And that's why we see such a high co-occurrence of various, you know, from low testosterone in men to, you know, autoimmune thyroid disease in women with, with body fat. And it, it's not that, uh, because body fat's not inert. I mean, that's what, you know, we kind of talked about, you know, these, these pathological changes that occur as early as, you know, eight year old children, it may even start earlier. And so, you know, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of small things. That, the good news, that's the bad, you know, of fat. Yeah, but the good yeah. news is there's so many things we can do. And there's so many people that, you know, I get emails all the time from people that have, have kind of implemented some of these things, uh, very small steps, you know, like we talked about sleep cycles and, mm-hmm. you know, doing whole body movements. And, and then the other big one would be getting rid of toxins. We know that these endocrine disrupting chemicals in our beds, in our pillows, in our couches, in our food, air, and water all affect fat cell signaling and, and uh, fat cell biology, which is really problematic. And so so that's another huge area is just clean up your entire life, house, work, and car environment, and, and you know, everything from the water uh, filter in your shower, um, your tap water in your house. And I think the beds, uh, we just got an organic bed not too long ago, and, and um and just the energy that we notice just from doing that one thing because you know the flame retardants are just everywhere and those really screw up our fat cell physiology and and this whole process that we've been discussing so that's another huge area i think people should address so for the listeners out there mike and i we both are in agreement that weight loss is not just about eating less and exercising more there it's it's really about taking care of your whole health looking at the whole body, looking at the hormonal imbalances, looking at the gut health, looking at detoxification, to really get the whole body at a new state of health, and then your body will just start releasing the fat. Right, Mike? Mm-hmm. Great, great point right there. And just to kind of highlight or emphasize one aspect you talked about, you know, exercising more, eating less. Generally what happens in studies, this is actually New England Journal of Medicine has shown this. When you when you do that, you actually suppress these gut hormones. And that's another huge aspect of the book, another huge aspect of emerging research right now that scientists are realizing that, hey, this procedure called bariatric surgery or gastric bypass, the way that it's so effective, and I'm not necessarily a fan of the procedure, I'm just talking about the biology of it Mm -hmm. for learning purposes, the way that it's so effective for causing weight loss is not because it restricts how much food people eat. It changes the gut ecology and Mm -hmm. the hormones released from the GI tract. So the GI tract is this really complex 
you know, shipping and receiving center, if you will. You know, it's going to take incoming nutrients, process those through different transporters, you know, absorb things, uh, different, you know, macro and micronutrients and send them to the body. I mean, it's very complex and dynamic. And in, in so doing, it ha- releases a lot of these hormones. The category are called incretin hormones. And guess what? Gastric bypass dramatically increases these gut hormones that are often suppressed in diabetics and overweight and obese individuals. So when you suppress the amount of food that's come in, guess what? You also suppress these hormones. And one study that I was referring to, New New England Journal of Medicine, showed that these hormones were suppressed for up to 18 months after an eight-week weight loss you know, low calorie diet. So this is a huge aspect. And again, another big you know, point in the book, Belly Fat Effect, is focus on these gut hormones. They control, believe it or not, Dr. Carey, more than 50% of insulin's uh, signaling and post-meal processing, which is huge and a very powerful point. A lot of practitioners that I meet with uh, have no idea about this, that these gut hormones are so powerful. And a lot of people in the weight loss space don't know about it either. And so you know, there's many ways that these gut hormones become suppressed, one of which is synthetic sweeteners. So here we go. Someone goes on a low-calorie diet, so they're suppressing their gut hormones for up to 18 months, and this is per New England Journal of Medicine and other research studies. And then they're, you know, taking, you know, sugar-free substitutes, everything from stevia, aspartame, sucralose, and so forth. And, and that's further not only perturbing their gut hormones, but affecting the composition of the gut microbiome, which we talked about is so, so important. And, um, you know, other things like eating while stressed, eating late at night, you know, your gut hormones are most active during the middle part of the day. And that goes back to like we talked about eating a huge lunch is so critical. Um, so, so another area of gut health and weight loss and kind of a calorie independent, uh, approach at looking at, you know, how to optimize your body comp. So Mike, I feel like we need to do a whole other show just on gut hormones. It's that powerful. I agree, Dr. K. This because is- you're right, nobody is talking about it. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm sure our listeners want to know, because <laughs> you just said something right there that has just piqued a lot of interest about the stevia. You know, so many people are on stevia because it's supposedly so much healthier for you than regular sugar and you just said no 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 that's going to script your gut hormones yeah well i mean so i don't know if you've played around with the glucometer yourself dr carrie but my wife and i you know just for fun we have a you know uh, these ketone sticks and these blood glucose sticks and i would encourage everyone to do this at home so you know what foods affect your blood sugar you know how stress affects your blood sugar and you can really quantify it i think you know having data is really important for kind of tracking things and what you can track you can improve but anyway um, we used to have a lot of stevia in the house and just because oh yeah it's like this natural you know sh- sugar you know substitute and um, my wife particularly likes it in her coffee and so we started playing around and guess what stevia has a spike in your your post meal blood sugar so um, it hasn't been studied to that it affects the gut hormones in a super negative way like aspartame and sucralose does but it still does affect the signaling and these mm-hmm. taste receptors and so forth and so we got after we saw that, and we, you know, this is obviously unpublished. Just you know, mm-hmm. my wife and I mess around in the kitchen with these blood glucose ticks, but we have seen re- repetitively, you know, consistently, stevia spikes your blood sugar after a meal more so than not. And so I think, yeah, in my opinion, it's a no-no. It's out, even though it's low calorie. It's supposedly healthy and natural. I'm done with that. I think that the we just need to get rid of all. Uh, sweeteners entirely and just eat real food and and that helps to reset this entire process and so once you kind of do that you'll realize how these you know kind of fake uh, sweeteners um they taste chemically once you get them out of your body even stevia or xylitol Mm -hmm. so as you said we we always seem to go back to the basics that's always what functional medicine is about always going back to the basics eating real food getting good amounts of exercise moving your whole body making sure you're sleeping great, making sure you're getting bright light exposure during the day. And as you were saying, eating your biggest meal at lunchtime. So Mike, we're starting to run low on time. How can our listeners find out more about you? Where can they find your book? Do you have a Facebook page? What is your website? Give us all the details. 
Yeah, I would love to. Thanks for asking me. So um, the best website is called highintensityhealth.com. So that's kind of my blog where we do a lot of videos. And I also have a podcast uh, like yourself, Dr. Kerry, and uh, information there, um, you know, about, you know, different real food cooking tips that my wife and I film uh, and also information about, you know, some blog posts on on some of the things that we discussed here today, Dr. Kerry, but in a little bit more depth, you know, I have blog posts on, um, you know, gut hormones and endocrine disrupting chemicals and, you know, ways to increase the diversity of your gut bacteria and all that. Now, if you're looking for like a video series, uh, if you go to bellyfateffect.com, I have a three-part free video series where people can just opt in and, and view some of that. And they've been viewed, you know, uh, 10, you know, 15,000 times by people all over the world and have a lot of great comments and feedback. And that's entirely free. So, uh, yeah, I'm on Facebook, too. It's just um, Facebook.com slash Mike Munsell MS. And we're on Instagram and Twitter and all throughout the web. So, yeah, we'd definitely love to connect with anyone if they're interested. So for the listeners out there, if you're driving in your car right now, if you're out jogging, whatever you're doing, I'll make sure that all of those links are in the podcast notes so that you can easily find Mike and all of his information. Mike, thank you so much for being my special guest today. This has been an awesome interview, and I cannot wait for part two where we're going to talk about gut hormones. We'd love to do it. Thanks so much for the invite, Dr. Kerry. All right, that wraps up this very special episode of the Functional Medicine Radio Show with Michael Mutzel. And I want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in today. And I'd like to invite you back next week for another episode of the Functional Medicine Radio Show. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, the Functional Medicine Doc. Have a great week, everyone. You've been listening to the Functional Medicine Radio Show with your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, known internationally as the Functional Medicine Doc. Dr. Carey is committed to helping patients find the root cause of their health problems and fixing the cause with natural treatments so they can feel normal again. Dr. Carey is the founder of Functional Medicine Ontario and is the author of the hit book, Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again. Please tell your friends about the Functional Medicine Radio Show, and we'll see you next week with more from Dr. Carey.